Hello, my name is Emily Swackhammer, and I'm a horticulture extension educator with Penn State Extension in Montgomery County. I'm going to talk about the spotted lanternfly, what can homeowners do? This is the quarantine map for the spotted lanternfly as of October 3rd, 2016. As residents of this affected area know, the quarantine map will change. So you should always check to make sure you're looking at the most current quarantine map by going to the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture website and the URL is listed on the screen there. If you live outside of this quarantined area, we really want you to report if you find the spotted lanternfly. We need everybody's eyes looking for this insect. If you find it, please try to capture it, put it in a vial of alcohol, or somehow kill it and report it to the PDA people through the phone number or the bad bug at pa.gov website. If you can't catch it, try to at least take a picture of it and send that in also to the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. If you live inside the quarantine area, you can still report it. We know it's there, so we may not be able to react to your finding right away. Um, but we are interested in heavy population areas especially. The other thing that people that live inside the quarantine area need to know is that we really need everybody's help to try to kill as many of these insects as we can and also not move it to other areas. So within the quarantine area, there are variations in population levels. It's important to not spread it from where you find it, even if uh, it would be moved within the quarantine area. That is not a good thing either. So people need to learn to identify the insect. And I have the life cycle shown here on the screen. So just briefly, it will overwinter as eggs. And I'll show you some um, additional pictures of egg masses a little later on. And then it will hatch into nymphs that are black with white spots. It goes through several molts in that stage. And then it will molt again and um, develop red coloration. And of course, they're getting bigger and bigger as this process goes on. Then it will turn into the adult stage. Uh, here it's shown hanging on the side of a tree. Here are two on the side of a tree. The females will lay eggs. The, the adults will all die in our cold winters and the eggs are the overwintering stage. So we need for people to learn to identify it. Please teach other people what it looks like. And then if you're um, finding it, we want you to try to kill any viable life stages so that would uh, depend on what time of the year it is, how you're going to do that. And of course, um, avoid moving it to new areas. So I wrote some information on what to do if you find the spotted lanternfly on your property. You can find this article on the Penn State Spotted Lanternfly website. Um, it is a uh, pretty good description, I think, of all the practices that are being used at the time. But I also have it in this format where you can look across the top here and see what time of the year it is. And it outlines the different management strategies that you may be able to use. So for example, um, this fall, we're recording this in November, you can destroy egg masses. You can destroy most of your Alanthus altissima trees, which are its preferred hosts. You can treat most Alanthus altissima trees with an herbicide. And, um, but you, you can't use the sticky bands to destroy the nymphs. That just doesn't work that time of the year, and so on. So I'm going to base this presentation on this chart and take you through the different options that you have. On the bottom here, I have the predominant life stages present throughout the year, just to remind folks about the life cycle of this insect. And then I have some important notes down here, too, in this um, text. I think one of the most important is always read herbicide and insecticide labels and follow the directions. So beginning in fall, uh, starting in 
possibly even early September and into October through May, you can destroy the egg masses. This is the viable life stage present at this, this time. So here I took a picture of an egg mass in November. And it's characteristic that the female will lay her eggs in rows and then cover them with this waxy kind of secretion to protect them. She often misses some of the eggs. So you'll often see some protruding out from underneath the egg mass, the covering. Not always, but, but often. This is the same egg mass that I photographed in March. So you can see the egg masses are uh, taking on kind of a different appearance. Uh, depending on how late in the winter it is. They sort of weather and develop this dry, cracked appearance later on. So when you go to scrape egg masses and destroy them, um, you can use one of the scraper cards that the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture has been distributing. You can use a credit card or a stick or really anything to scrape them off of the substances, the substrates where they're laying their eggs. Here they're being scraped into a plastic bag and then you would put alcohol or hand sanitizer into the bag and make sure all the eggs come into contact with that alcohol and it will kill the eggs. So you can scrape them. Um, you can literally just smash them, and you'll know that um, they're viable eggs because when you smash them, they will be wet inside. This is a picture showing where an egg mass was, and it was scraped off of a, a piece of metal. So you can see the remnants of the rose, kind of the shadow of where it was. Um, each egg mass will contain between 30 and 50 eggs. So um, through the winter, if you can scrape a lot of egg masses, you will destroy a lot of the potential individual insects that would be overwintering for next year. Now, a practice that can be used all year round is to destroy most of the ailanthus trees on your property. We believe that ailanthus is one of this insect's very preferred hosts. And if you um, can destroy most of the ailanthus trees, you will be able to concentrate the spotted lanternfly on your property onto the few remaining ailanthus trees that they really like. So this picture shows ailanthus um, that is a female tree. So there's male and female trees. This female tree has the remnants of the flowers shown. And if you look at that up closely, it's loaded with seeds. And each seed is an individual seed in this little winged structure. So that's one way to help you identify it. So we want you especially to destroy female ailanthus trees because they are such prolific producers of seed. We want to reduce the possibility that they're going to reseed and spread more of this tree, which is an invasive tree in our forests. To identify ailanthus trees, you can look for leaves during the growing season. This is a picture of one ailanthus leaf, so it's a compound leaf. And you can see there are many leaflets along a central midrib there. This tree is often confused with staghorn sumac or walnut. One way to really tell ailanthus trees from the other two is by smelling the leaves and even the crushed stems. Ailanthus trees have a very rank odor when you smell them. And um, some people describe it as rancid peanut butter, which smells very different than walnut. And sumac doesn't really smell that much at all. So that's one way of trying to identify your ailanthus trees. At the base of the leaflets, you'll see these little kind of projections on on the leaflet. So that's another identification characteristic to look for. And then the stem of that big leaf has a very broad base. So you can look for that as a characteristic. When the leaves fall off the trees in the fall, they leave a big scar where that base was attached. And it's a very big, prominent scar on the stems. So those, that's some uh, identification tips for ailanthus trees. Um, once you know where ailanthus trees are, another really good practice for homeowners to use is to avoid parking automobiles or really anything that you need to move out of the quarantine area under ailanthus trees. So the adults will be on the ailanthus trees 
and they will be laying eggs, but they also will lay eggs under the trees and on any other objects around the trees. And this is one way that we're very concerned that the spotted lanternfly could spread if you park your car under a heavily infested tree and then move your car outside of the quarantine zone when the eggs hatch, you can spread the insect. So certainly avoid parking them under Atlantis trees, but if you have spotted lanternfly active on other trees in your landscape, please avoid parking them under those trees as well. So as you're considering your Atlantis tree population, when um, you identify them and you remove most of them, about 90% of them is what we're recommending, you'll need to treat the ones you've removed with an herbicide to prevent them from re-sprouting. If you don't do this, they will re-sprout uh, from the stumps and even from the roots. So there are some herbicides that do this uh, pretty well. If you don't want to use herbicide on your property, be prepared to continue to cut those sprouts back probably for years until you actually um, get the root system to expand all of its energy and stop sprouting. Then starting up in spring, when the eggs hatch, you can kill the nymphs with sticky bands. Some of you that live in the quarantine area may be familiar with this. You may have seen it around. Um, the picture on the right shows sticky bands. So they are um, just brown paper that have a sticky outside to them. And the nymphs have a behavior where they'll kind of move up and down the trunks of infested trees. Um, throughout the day. So you can put these sticky bands on the trees and when they move, um, when they start crawling on the trunk, they will get onto the bands and be stuck there and that will kill them. We have killed um, literally thousands and thousands of nymphs with sticky bands and it seems to be a pretty effective um, control measure that doesn't require any pesticide use. So. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture has um, been uh, using volunteers to ban their Atlantis trees on their properties for the last two years, and we are very interested in having additional people do that. Um, if you want to sign up to ban your Atlantis trees, there's some information on the screen there. Again, it's basically contacting the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. Uh, you can use the bad bug email address, or you can call any of the Penn State Extension offices within the quarantine area. I have the Lehigh County Extension Office listed on the screen. So if you want to volunteer to ban your Atlantis trees in the PDA program, please contact either PDA or Penn State and let us know. We do not have funding for people to put bans on other ornamental trees, but if you are interested in doing that, you certainly um, are welcome and encouraged to find sticky bans on your own and use this practice. Then through the summer, um, we are using systemic insecticides to treat the standing Alanthus trees. So the 10% of the Atlantis trees that were left standing, which will attract the spotted lanternfly, you can treat those trees with a systemic insecticide. I have a few different formulations just shown in pictures here on the screen. Um, follow the labels on these products. Um, it's very important to have enough water to get the, especially the soil drenched products into the tree and that's all specified on the label. What we're doing here is we're making that tree toxic to the insects and we're using it as a trap to draw them in. So, and of course, read the label first. <clears throat> then if you have high populations of spotted lanternfly on your tree through the growing season, you can apply a registered contact insecticide if you have adequate equipment. So in Pennsylvania, the law states that it has to be, uh, the site that you're applying it to has to be on the label. So any of your ornamental trees can be sprayed with an insecticide that has a label for use on ornamental trees. 
The adequate equipment part is really important though because some of these trees are very tall and there's high populations high up in the crown and um, not uh, very many home gardeners have adequate equipment to get up into these tall canopies. So you might consider contracting a professional landscaper or pesticide applicator to come in and do this treatment for you. From July through December, the recommendation is to avoid moving gravid or fertilized females. So each female will probably lay at least two egg masses and we're not sure, but maybe three. So moving even one fertilized female uh, to another area uh, allows the potential for her to start the infestation with uh, the tremendous amount of eggs that they can um, lay. So we have seen um, fertilized females and, and the adult stage in general hitching rides on cars. Um, even when you walk into infested areas, they will jump onto you and you can move them just on your clothing. So do all you can to avoid moving these females. Once the egg masses are laid, uh, we need everybody to avoid moving these viable egg masses. This picture shows egg masses on a fence post, and you can see there's many egg masses on here. Um, they're often on the undersides of things, so this fence post was flipped over to take the picture, but they will lay their eggs on um, cement blocks, on tires, really on anything. Um, and not only, you know, items like this that, you know, are just kind of, you know, discarded items, um, but also on items that you might have in your yard that, you know, are things like play sets, um, grills, uh, tree stands for hunters, you know, anything really that's in the infested area could be chosen as a place for the egg masses to be laid. So I wrote this article, um, Tips for Handling Yard Waste in Quarantine Areas, and the concern is that the spotted lanternfly may lay eggs on especially woody debris and firewood, and then people may do yard cleanup and move that out of the area, or there's uh, firewood that's being cut in the infested areas, and we're trying to prevent people from moving the viable egg masses that way. So this article talks about um, the best practices to leave the yard waste where it came from. So if you're cleaning up your yard, you can just move it off to you know, an unused portion of your property and just leave it there, then you're not moving any viable eggs. If you need to move that yard waste or perhaps you know, your commercial company that does yard cleanup and you need to haul that to another area, this article gives very specific directions for how to process the yard waste. It needs to be chipped to a certain size and then um, composted in piles that are reaching a specific temperature and turned um, because that whole process will kill the viable eggs. So if you, um, if you look on the Penn State Spotted Lanternfly website, we have that article posted. Then there's also a checklist for residents that live in the spotted lanternfly quarantine area. And this is um, a document that you can use to be in compliance with the quarantine order. So before you move any of these outdoor items, you need to inspect that item, make sure that you've destroyed any egg masses, adults, or nymphs, and then um, on the, on the other side of this sheet, there's a place to sign it. And if you're moving something like a play set from your yard to uh, another area, if you take this checklist with you, then you are in compliance with the quarantine um, order. This checklist is posted on the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture website, so you can find it and print it out. And if you need help uh, getting them, you can call your county extension office. Uh, we have copies in each county office. 
So just to summarize and let you have this information on the screen for a little bit longer, um, to report the spotted lanternfly or get into contact with the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, the phone number and the email address is listed there. The two websites that are listed in the middle of this page are the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture website and then the Penn State Extension website, both good resources for information.